WatchGuard Capital. Invest your time wisely. This is part four of the J&J Slip and Fall Ponzi Scheme entitled Timelines. If you missed parts one, two, and three, you can watch that playlist to see the full story. But this is where we left off in part three, where we learned that Matthew Beasley, who was the lawyer behind the IOLTA, which received hundreds of millions of dollars in victim deposits and also fabricated the underlying purchase agreements, had represented Jeffrey Judd and two other owners of some specialty pharmacies in a lawsuit shortly before the Ponzi scheme began in January of 2017. And this is the private placement memorandum that Judd started using as of January 1st, 2022, in connection with selling J&J purchasing contracts. And in the background of company president section for Judd, it states, In the early 2000s, the real estate sector was the place to be for someone like Jeffrey, who excelled at sales. So he left the pharmaceutical industry and took a position with Countrywide Home Loans. When the bubble burst in 2009, Jeffrey took an ownership position in Partel Specialty Pharmacy, serving as vice president of sales and marketing. And his LinkedIn profile somewhat confirms that information. It states he worked for Partel Pharmacy until September 2018, which I'm assuming at this point is the same company. And it makes sense for him to terminate his employment with Partel towards the end of 2018 because he would have been under the impression at that time that he is allegedly, legitimately grossing an average monthly income of $73,000 per month in 2017 and grossing $171,000 a month in income on average in 2018. And who needs to work two jobs at that point? And focusing on the J&J Consulting Slip and Fall Settlement operations at the end of 2018 would have proven to be the right call if it didn't turn out to be a Ponzi scheme. Because at 12.5% per contract, he would gross over $3.5 million per month on average for the first few months in 2022 until the FBI raid shut it down. The problem is, when you look up Partel Pharmacy LLC, it wasn't formed until November of 2018. So it couldn't have been the entity that Judd joined in 2009, and it couldn't be the one that sued a CFO shortly before 2017. Partel Pharmacy lists one active manager, Michael L. Peters, an attorney with an office in this building and a location that will be designated with a blue dot. And it lists two inactive managers, Robert Seek, who was the manager in November of 2018 when Partel Pharmacy was formed, and Mark Barbos, who was listed as the manager in November of 2020. And now it's time to Google Partel Specialty Pharmacy. And the top hit, Partel Pharmacy's website, where it says it's been serving the Las Vegas community since 1991. Number two. Partel Specialty Pharmacy's Facebook page, which includes this photo labeled as owners and staff from 2011. That's Robert Seek, and that's Robert Sigler. And number three, this FDA warning letter to One Way Drug LLC doing business as Partel Specialty Pharmacy from March 2019. And this is the first paragraph of that warning letter. Dear Mr. Seek, from July 17, 2017 to July 19, 2017, U.S. Food and Drug Administration FDA investigators inspected your facility one Way Drug LLC doing business as Partel Specialty Pharmacy West, located at 8751 West Charleston Boulevard, Suite 120, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89117. Additionally, from February 26, 2018 to March 8, 2018, USFD investigators inspected your facility, One Way Drug LLC doing business as Partel Specialty Pharmacy East, located at 5835 Southeastern Avenue, Suite 101, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89119. During the inspections, the investigators noted that drug products you produce failed to meet the conditions of Section 503A of the Federal Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act for exemption for certain provisions of the FDCA. The investigators noted serious deficiencies in your practices for producing drug products which put patients at risk. So the one-way drug LLC locations will be designated with neon pink and neon green. There are a lot more companies and individuals that could be included in this timeline, but for comprehension's sake, I'm limiting this video to the minimum required to explain and connect the three main sub-timelines that seem to converge and form Partel Pharmacy in 2018. Those sub-timelines are the One-Way Drug Timeline, the Pathway Specialty Pharmacy Timeline, and the Peters Timeline. And let's look at the One-Way Drug Timeline first. In early 2005, Robert Seek is a pharmacist, and Robert Sigler seems to really like adding the word global to the name of any company he starts. They start Desert Global Partners together on April 7, 2005, and they both join One Way Drug Incorporated 18 days later on April 25, 2005. They let One Way Drug Incorporated lapse, and at least Seek starts One Way Drug LLC on 24 April 2006. And it would make sense for Sigler to have been part of One Way Drug LLC at that time too, given his affiliation with One Way Drug Incorporated, but complete records are not always available online, so I can't confirm that. 
But Sigler did state he was an owner of Partel Specialty One-Way Drug LLC at least as early as April 2008 in the IAPD database, which is a disclosure system for investment advisors. Judd indicated he joined Partel Specialty Pharmacy in 2009 in the private placement memorandum. He doesn't mention it in that document, but he also formed this company in February 2008, which I think is pronounced Rock Hard LLC, with Matthew L. Peters, the attorney, listed as the current manager of Partel Pharmacy, but that company only exists for about a year. Sigler forms Global Key Management LLC in 2011, Global Partel Partners Fund in 2014, and registers Global Key Advisors as a registered investment advisory in Nevada during the same year, which goes on to be listed as a distributor for the Global Key Fund 1 limited partnership in 2016. One Way Drug goes on to file in Oklahoma, Texas, New York, Arizona, California, Montana, Utah, Alabama, Vermont, and Nebraska. The Arizona application for registration is important for two reasons. One, Sigler states he was a managing member of One Way Drug, LLC, as of September 2014. And two, it's the first use of the 7231 Eastern Avenue address, to my knowledge. This address used to be a PostNet location, so Suite B1000 is probably Mailbox 1000. The Clark County website does show a lawsuit involving One Way Drug, LLC owners in 2016, and it looks like Robert Sieg and Michael Nagy sue One Way Drug LLC, Robert Sigler, and a bunch of his global and partel named LLCs, as well as a few other parties. And Matthew Beasley does appear to have been the retained counsel that represented Nagy and Seek. The case type states NRS chapter 78 to 89, and it references a complaint for damages. But the lawsuit itself and the parties involved are most likely the one Judd was referencing, because after this lawsuit, Sigler is no longer associated with One Way Drug, and he goes on to change the associated addresses of all the companies and funds he managed from this One Way Drug address to this one, and then these, and finally this one. However, interestingly, the Clark County Court Document website also shows a few other lawsuits involving One Way Drug that included Tim Brown suing One Way Drug, doing business as Partel Specialty Pharmacy, Nick Del Gandio, Jeff Judd, Michael Nagy, Chris Peters, Michael Peters, Robert Sieg, and Robert Sigler. And Matthew Beasley was the retained counsel in this case as well. And this lawsuit from 2010 involved One Way Drug suing Kenton Crowley, which brings us to timeline number two, the Pathway Specialty Pharmacy timeline. When I did a Google search for Kenton Crowley Pathway Specialty Pharmacy, I found this article which states, The Nevada State Board of Pharmacy recently filed a disciplinary action against Michelle Batten, Kenton Crowley, Timothy Brown, and Pathway Specialty Compounds. A pharmacist whose name surfaced in the Michael Jackson death investigation is once again under scrutiny. <laughs> Hold on. Are you telling me that the death of Michael Jackson is somehow connected to the J&J slip and fall Ponzi scheme? No, I am not. Because according to this article... Dr. Crowley claimed he had stopped working at the Applied Pharmacy in July of 2008 and had no connection to any drugs dispended to Dr. Murray or Michael Jackson. So back to this article. In a complaint recently filed by the State Board of Pharmacy, Pathway is accused of multiple violations of state laws involving a substance called calcium gluconate. It's a specially prepared compound used to treat calcium deficiencies due to hormone imbalances, some skin conditions, even to relieve muscle cramps from black widow spider bites. The complaint says that calcium gluconate from Pathway caused nine cases of sepsis, a dangerous bacterial blood infection that resulted in people being hospitalized. It was not appropriate to be dispensed to multiple patients, said Tim Brown, one of the three pharmacists named in the state complaint and the only one who would talk to us. He explained that the calcium gluconate was labeled for oral use only, but because of a shortage of injectable formula, his colleagues devised a workaround. As he told the state board in answer to their accusations, he blames the whole thing on the reckless behavior of an individual, basically a rogue pharmacist. He identifies that pharmacist as Dr. Kenton Lance Crowley. So from those two articles, the NPI register, pharmacy board records, and other publicly available sources, this is how this sub-timeline played out. Crowley got a DUI in 2007, which violates the probation he was on and causes him to lose his California license in 2008. Crowley loses his Nevada license in June of 2012, most likely from the sepsis incident, and Michelle Batten leaves Pathway Specialty Compounds in November of 2012 and goes to work for Concierge Compounding Pharmaceuticals Incorporated. Crowley drops off and Crowley Gettys is replaced by Gettys Corp LLP formed February 2013. I don't know if Gettys Corp continued compounding or not, but there's a complaint against Pathway in October of 2014, so I think it did, but I don't know that for sure. And speaking of Nevada Pharmacy Board meetings, here are the minutes from the July 2016 meeting. And here's the first agenda item that we will look at where Christopher Peters and Pathway Specialty Compounds appear before the board for disciplinary reasons. And Mike Peters, Attorney Peters, was present as counsel representing Daniel Shalala and Christopher Peters. And I believe that Christopher Peters, the pharmacist, is the son of Michael Peters, the attorney. 
Mr. Edwards stated that the practices in question included inadequate product testing, record keeping, sterilization techniques, and insufficient sterile compounding training. Mr. Edwards presented three stipulations and orders regarding Christopher Peters, Daniel Shalala, and Pathway. Mr. Peters shall receive a letter of reprimand, pay a fine of $2,500, pay an administrative fee of $495, shall complete an additional four continuing education units on the topics of proper record keeping, error prevention, and supervising pharmacist responsibilities. Mr. Peters shall not engage in any form of sterile compounding in any Nevada licensed facility until he completes a board staff approved sterile compounding training program. Attorney Peters agreed to the facts Mr. Edwards described and to the stipulation and order presented. Stipulation and order for Christopher Peters as presented, seconded, passed unanimously. The next agenda item we will look at from this meeting is this one for Professional Rx Pharmacy, where Matthew Peters, who I believe is the brother of Christopher Peters and another son of Michael L. Peters, is a business manager, Stuart Kozar, pharmacy manager, and Massimo Cavallaro, owner, appeared and were sworn by President Bash prior to answering questions or offering testimony. Mr. Peters explained that Professional Rx Pharmacy intends to purchase Pathway Specialty Pharmacy's assets. He stated that Professional Rx Pharmacy would be at the same location, but would not be retaining any of the original staff or performing any sterile compounding. He stated that Professional Rx Pharmacy mainly provides manufacturer-produced topical pain creams. Mr. Peters, Mr. Kozer, and Mr. Cavallaro answered questions to the board's satisfaction regarding policies and procedures, marketing, and staff training. Motion to approve Professional Rx Pharmacy's application for Nevada Pharmacy License pending a positive inspection. Second, passed unanimously. So that timeline of events is how Professional Rx Pharmacy comes into existence. Now let's look at why it was important to the main timeline. When I looked up Partel Pharmacy in this NPI reference tool, it had an enumeration date that looked right, December 2018, but it showed the owner as Matthew Peters and not Michael Peters, Partel's current active manager per the Nevada Business Portal. It listed Partel Pharmacy at 2560 East Sunset Road, Suite 120, Las Vegas, not the one-way drug doing business as Partel Pharmacy East or West locations from the FDA letter. And it listed two phone numbers, one ending in 6023 that will be designated with this red phone and one ending in 4797 that will be designated with this black phone. And when I did a search of the 6023 number in the MPI reference database, I got these returns, Crowley Gettys, Gettys Corp, and finally Partel Pharmacy. But when I did a search for the other 4797 number, I got these returns. Now these two are Partel Pharmacy and a match. This one is Gettys Corp that got all of its assets bought out by Professional Rx Pharmacy. But what are all these other pharmacies in Oregon about? Time to Google. And when I searched Matthew Peters, Oregon Pharmacist, these were the top returns. Matthew Hogan Peters, 38, was sentenced to three years in federal prison and three years supervised release. Peters was also ordered to pay more than $3.4 million in restitution to the IRS in addition to back taxes Peters has already paid. Which brings us to the Peters timeline. Matthew Peters formed JMSP LLC with John Stockman in Oregon in April 2009. And I'm guessing that JMSP stood for John Matthew Stockman Peters, but I could be wrong. The principal place of business for JMSP changes to 10,000 Southeast Main Street, number 118, at this hospital on the April 2010 annual filing. An MPKM LLC is added as a member, which is a company registered Matthew Peters at a private residence in Las Vegas designated with this dot. That private residence is also the same one listed in 2014 by all three members of Parmed Pharmaceuticals, LLC, Matthew, Michael, and Chris Peters. Chris Peters is listed as a secretary for JMSP in December of 2010, and Michael Peters is associated as a member and registered agent in 2012. In 2013, Matthew Peters acquires Professional Center 205 Pharmacy and Professional Center Pharmacy, two names, same firm, associated with the same hospital address as JMSP. And this is where the healthcare fraud allegedly occurs. Matthew Hogan Peters, 36, of Dana Point, California, made an initial appearance today in federal court before U.S. Magistrate Judge Stacey F. Beckerman. The court unsealed a two count indictment charging Peters with healthcare fraud and aggravated identity theft. Here's that indictment from December of 2019, and here's the first paragraph. Matthew H. Peters, defendant herein, owned and operated a compounding pharmacy at 10,000 Southeast Main Street in Portland, Oregon that conducted business under the names Professional Center Pharmacy and Professional Center 205 Pharmacy, collectively Professional Center Pharmacy. CBS Caremark administered prescription drug benefits for many patients Professional Center Pharmacy served. From April 1, 2014 through May 15, 2015, Professional Center Pharmacy saw insurance reimbursements of more than $3.4 million from CBS Caremark, which in turn paid nearly $1.6 million to Professional Center Pharmacy over the same period. 
In mid-2015, CVS Caremark decided to audit the claims for reimbursements that Professional Center of Pharmacy had submitted between April 1, 2014 and May 15, 2015. During the course of its audit, CVS Caremark identified discrepancies potentially requiring the reversal of payments for approximately 185 claims, totaling approximately $242,287. More than 50 of the discrepancies arose from the lack of records proving customers' receipt of the medications. These discrepancies implicated more than $59,000 in potentially unwarranted payments from CVS Caremark to Professional Center Pharmacy. In addition, the scope of the discrepancies identified in the audit raised the prospect that Professional Center Pharmacy would be suspended from CVS Caremark's network, resulting in the pharmacy's loss of a substantial volume of business. Matthew H. Peters submitted documentation to explain the discrepancies on or about October 19, 2015. That documentation included 41 written attestations, each purporting to bear the electronic signature of an individual patient and confirming that the executing patient had received the prescription in question. Each of the electronic signatures was counterfeit, in that all of them were actually created by Peters himself between October 9, 2015 and October 14, 2015. And thus count one, healthcare fraud, and count two, aggravated identity theft. So to recap, between April 2014 and May 2015, Professional Center bills CVS for $3.4 million, which pays out $1.69 million. CVS does an audit and finds 185 discrepancies for $242,287. 50 transactions lack records, and they want $59,000 back and to suspend Professional Center from their network. Matthew Peter uses DocuSign to counterfeit 41 client attestations, saying clients got their drugs. CVS says, hey, these are counterfeit. Matthew Peters doubles down and says the clients gave him verbal permission to sign on their behalf. This kicks off a secret multi-year investigation into healthcare fraud by Matthew Peters, culminating in an indictment in December 2019 that we just reviewed. Before we see how that court case plays out, let's review what happened after the CBS audit and DocuSign counterfeit events and before the indictment in chronological order. According to the site, Matthew Peters starts Strandview Enterprises in Texas in April 2016. In July 2016, Susan Hodges is listed on a document for Professional Center, indicating she is an authorized agent and owner. As a reminder, this is the same month that Chris Peters appeared before the Nevada Pharmacy Board involving Pathway Specialty and Michael Peters as his counsel. And Matthew Peters appears as a business manager for Professional Rx to seek approval to buy out the assets of Pathway Specialty. In April 2017, Michael Peters starts Strandview Pharmacy in Nevada, and Michelle Batten, who left Pathway Specialty in November of 2012, after Crawley lost his license, returns as a pharmacist for Professional Rx Pharmacy. In May 2017, Michael Peters forms Sunrise Pharmacy in Nevada. In August 2017, Matthew Peters changes the name of Professional Center 205 Pharmacy to Synergy Rx1 and then withdraws from ownership a few months later. In December 2017, Michael Peters and Michelle Batten request that Sunrise Pharmacy and Professional Rx be allowed to use the same restroom after a remodel. In August 2018, Matthew Peters opens Bayview Specialty Services in Texas, and this LLC is special because a Reg D was filed with the SEC indicating intentions to sell $2.5 million in equity shares, with Matthew Peters being listed as a related person and Michael Peters Esquire signing as an attorney. In October 2008, the Oregon Bayview Specialty Services LLC is formed by Matthew Peters at address 11723 Northeast Gleason Street, Portland, Oregon which is super close to 11717 Northeast Gleason Street, Portland, Oregon, one of the addresses associated with the phone number ending in 4797 in the NPI database, but not the same, which will be explained in the bonus round. But speaking of the NPI database, we have come full circle back to December 2018 when Matthew Peters completed the NPI registration for Partel Pharmacy that linked all these pharmacies to these two phone numbers. In July 2019, Sunrise Pharmacy is merged into Partel Pharmacy under SEEK, who was listed as the manager as of November 2018. And then the sealed indictment occurs in December of 2019, and Matthew Peters is arrested sometime before March 5, 2020. In July of 2020, the U.S. attorney updates charge 2 from aggravated identity theft to tax evasion. Matthew H. Peters, a resident of Laguna Beach, California, willfully attempted to evade and defeat income tax due and owing by him to the United States of America for the calendar years 2014 through 2017 in the approximate total amount of $5.4 million by committing the following affirmative acts, among others. Diverting to his personal use approximately $3.3 million in corporate revenue by transferring those funds to bank accounts and real estate projects in Belize. And in 2017, purchasing a house in Incline Village, Nevada for $1.6 million, a house in San Carlos, California for $984,000, and a house in Laguna Beach, California for $2.6 million, with cashier checks 
and recording the expenses as pharmacy inventory expenses. And Matthew Peters takes the plea deal a few weeks later in August of 2020. One interesting condition of the plea deal is paragraph 4, which states, Dismissal, no prosecution. The United States Attorney Office agrees to dismiss the indictment returned in this case and to forego any additional charges against the defendant stemming from or relating to either 1. The operation of his compounding pharmacy businesses before January 1, 2020 or 2. The tax evasion conduct charged in count 2 of the superseding information. So any misconduct on that side of the red line would not be prosecuted as long as all conditions of the plea agreement were met. Most of the pharmacies Matthew Peters formed and or was associated with ceased to exist shortly after the January 1st, 2020 cutoff, except Partel Pharmacy, which now lists Michael L. Peters as the active manager. So those are the three timelines that seem to converge on Partel Pharmacy. The one-way drug timeline that has Sigler getting off after Seek sues him in 2016. The Pathway Specialties Compounds timeline that involves a few buyouts and appearances before the Nevada State Pharmacy Board and the Peters timeline that has Matthew Peters starting some pharmacies in Oregon and exiting when he pleads guilty to healthcare fraud and tax evasion and goes to prison. And what is truly remarkable is this time period right here, because in 2016 and 2017, while Matthew Peters was deliberately purchasing properties with cashier's checks and hiding income from the IRS to avoid paying taxes on $4 million and $9.3 million in income, and Robert Seek and Michael Nagy were suing Robert Sigler, and Matthew Beasley is representing them but also having gambling problems, Jeffrey Judd was allegedly making tens of thousands of dollars a month from a Ponzi scheme, either knowingly or unknowingly. And on that note, let's switch gears back to the main J&J Ponzi scheme timeline now. On February 17th, Hindenburg Research records Shane Jager stating, but that's the setup that Judd's created. And you know, he he recently had a Texas-based firm come in and essentially audit his company, a company that works with the SEC Uh and FBI, and he had them come in. He spent a couple hundred thousand to do that, and they revised docs and looked at everything and said, okay, we... So, like, this is all above board with the regulatory agencies? Absolutely, yeah, and he... And then the conversations interrupted to take a lunch order. On February 4th, 2022, Judd sent out an email with the subject line, no more emailed contracts. Guys, I had another conversation with the attorneys that helped me set the private money placement documents up. They asked me if I was still sending out the contracts and if I was to stop. So from now on, there will not be any contracts sent out. It makes sense now because everything we need for the investors is found in the documents. There are even samples of the contracts. Before all we had was the contracts, so we had to send them. Plus, I'm the only one that can sign them. Matt, being the great attorney that he is, also set up a system for me to sign those as he writes them. This will save us a lot of time and streamline the process. What you will receive is a list of what has closed and a list of new ones in a screenshot or an emailed spreadsheet so you can continue to update your spreadsheet. Thank you for your understanding. It's imperative that we only use the documents that have been made by the attorneys for the private money placement. So this is another step towards being compliant, Jeffrey Judd. And as a reminder, the private placement memorandum for J&J purchasing went into effect on January 1st, 2022. And I don't know who the attorneys are that helped Judd with that private placement memorandum, but I do know that Jeffrey Judd filed a Form D for J&J purchasing on December 13th, 2021. The form was signed by Michael L. Peters, attorney. And technically, J&J Purchasing LLC was a new entity formed in Florida on October 13, 2021, within the last five years. So the following information provided on the Form D was true. It did have $0 sold. It did have zero investors. It did have $0 paid in sales commissions. It did have $0 in finder's fees paid. And it did have $0 paid to its executive officers. But if J&J Purchasing Incorporated would not have been formed and the Form D was completed for the J&J consulting entities that the Slip and Fall Ponzi scheme started under, the responses would have looked drastically different and more like this. 400 million plus sold. 600 to 1,000 investors have invested. Tens of millions in sales commissions and finder's fees have been paid to solicitors. And millions upon millions were paid to its executive officer, Jeffrey Judd. So it'll be very interesting to see if the identity of the Texas-based firm that Shane referenced works with the SEC and FBI who completed an audit is ever revealed in the court transcripts. And if so, is it the same firm that helped set up the private placement memorandum, which would make sense, but doesn't necessarily have to be the same company? And was there communication between Michael Peters, the attorney who helped complete the Form D for J&J Purchasing, the Texas-based firm that did the audit, and the attorneys who set up the private placement memorandum, which would also make sense, but didn't necessarily have to occur? And who did Judd speak to that told him to stop sending out contracts? And why was it imperative only to use the J&J Purchasing documents? And how did Jeffrey Judd come to the conclusion that in doing so, it would bring him one step closer to being compliant? These are questions for another day, but I'll answer one more today. 
Why did Portland Professional Pharmacy at 11717 Northeast Gleason Street come up in the MPI database associated with Matthew Peters that was also mentioned in this U.S. Attorney Office press release associated with Matthew Peters, but was never mentioned in any of his court case documents? Well, here is why. As previously mentioned, Michelle Batten left Pathway Specialty in November of 2012, shortly after Crowley lost his Nevada's license. That very same month, she starts working for Concierge Compounding Pharmaceuticals Incorporated, owned by Hutan Melamed. And according to this article, Hutan Melamed has long been accused of masterminding a kickback and fraud scheme that involved a number of accomplices in a conspiracy to refer patients to his pharmacies to fill prescriptions, resulting in close to $200 million in fraudulent workers' compensation billings. He was indicted in federal district court for the Southern District of California in 2016. Another one of his locations included Portland Professional Pharmacy. So it would have been reasonable for any of his employees to start looking for another employer after his arrest to hedge their employment risk, which might be why Batten goes back to work at Professional Rx Pharmacy and Susan Hodges, who was listed as an owner of Portland Professional Pharmacy, associates with Professional Center Pharmacy in July 2016, the month after Melamed's indictment. And yes, those are the same two companies and individuals associated with Matthew Peters from the Peters timeline we discussed earlier in this video. Which means that both of these individuals were associated with pharmacies related to Melamed prior to his indictment, and with pharmacies related to Peters after Melamed's indictment, and that from at least April 2017 to July 2018, these two women were associated with companies of individuals who will both be sentenced to prison in 2021 for separate healthcare fraud schemes. And I think it was Susan Hodge's dual association that connected this phone number in the MPI database to Portland Professional Pharmacy, and I think that the Oregon's attorney's office was so used to writing Portland Professional Pharmacy in regards to the Melamed investigation that it accidentally used it in regards to the Peters investigation, and it really meant to say Professional Center Pharmacy. Which is both ironic and sad that there is that much fraud in our pharmaceutical industry, and something I will have to consider when I work on the healthcare spending portion of my project on how to solve national debt. But that's it for me from now. If you have any missing pieces to this puzzle, or if I got anything wrong in this video, feel free to send me an email at info at watchguardcapital.com so that I can either update or fix these timelines. I'm Stephen with WatchGuard Capital. Protect yourself and invest your time wisely.